right, so number seven. Number seven. Uh, a light plane attains an airspeed of 500 kilometers. So, and this is kind of a thing where you, like, you got to know what airspeed is for this to make sense. Oh. So, right? Yeah. So, so what do we mean when we talk about airspeed? Speed relative to the air. No. It's true. What would you, what do you think you would call the speed relative to the ground? Ground speed. Ground speed. Oh. Right? So, if you didn't know that, A, I will say, you've got Google. B, do you know it now? Okay, cool. So, shh. So, here's what we know. We know that the velocity of the plane relative to the air is 500 kilometers an hour, right? But it doesn't tell us the direction, so I'm just going to write at something, and we don't know what the direction is. All right? It says the pilot sets out for a destination 800 kilometers due north. So that's a displacement, right? Yes. Displacement of what relative to what? Plane relative to the ground, right? Because the destination and the takeoff point are presumably on the ground, and those two points are 800 kilometers apart. So that's the displacement of the plane relative to the ground. Now, it tells us that the, um, the plane is headed 20 degrees east of north to fly there directly. So what does that direction correspond to? Is that the direction relative to the ground or the direction relative to the air? It's okay. So it's so it's got to be relative to the air by process of elimination. It can't be relative to the ground because what direction does he want to go relative to the ground? Due north, right? Okay. The other way you can think about it is this. So pretend that so the plane is flying. Uh, what does it say? It says it's. Why am I dumb? Uh, the plane is headed 20 degrees east of north, right? So here's 20 degrees east of north, right? So the plane is flying this way, right? Yes. Good? Now, hypothetically, suppose the wind was just blowing straight east. Would the plane be moving in this direction, the direction it's pointing in? No. No, it would be moving, right? You see what I'm saying? It would be pointing in one direction, but not necessarily moving that direction, because the air is moving it additional. Follow? Yep. So, so that 20 degrees east of north is the direction that the plane is headed relative to the air. Follow? OK, now, what else do we know? Um, it says the plane arrives in two hours. Why do I care about the time? What do you got, Peter? Exactly. So I can combine this information to find out that the velocity of the plane relative to the ground is 800 over 2, so 400 kilometers an hour due north, right? Everybody good up to there? Yes. Okay. Finally, the question says, what was the wind velocity relative to the ground? So we're looking for the velocity of the air relative to the ground. Cool? All right, so here's the deal. This is, I think, what I did not do a great job prepping you guys with on the notes. All right, I, mean, I, I stressed the importance of this equation, right? That's why it's been on the board for the last three or four days. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to write an equation using these variables that looks like this, okay? And in helping people, one of the things I've discovered you can do is this, look. And to those of you who have come in before after school, I apologize, you've heard this before, all right? So forget about this for a minute, all right? Suppose I'm looking for the velocity of A relative to B, okay? Suppose that's the thing I'm trying to find. Well, automatically, I know that that is the exact same thing as the velocity of A relative to any other object plus the velocity of that other object relative to b, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that allows me a way to find the velocity of a relative to b, right? Yeah. So in this problem, I'm looking for 
the velocity of the air relative to the ground. Oh, well, that's equal to the velocity of the air relative to what's the other object they care about here? The plane. So this is the velocity of the air relative to the plane plus the velocity of the plane relative to the ground. Awesome. Now I have an equation that I can use to help me find the thing that I'm missing. This is huge, you guys. I cannot understate, understate the importance of this. When you're dealing with relative motion, you have to come up with this equation. Is everybody good with that? All right, great. So what the bleep does this have to do with all of this? All right, well, the velocity of a relative to g is the thing that I'm looking for. Let's see. Oh, shoot. I don't know the velocity of a relative to p. Right? Look at the things I know. I know this, I know this, and I'm looking for this. So look, I don't know the velocity of a relative to p, but I do know the velocity of p relative to a. Oh, well, that's negative. Oops. So that's negative vpa, right? Plus, do I know the velocity of p relative to g? Oh, right on. I know that. Cool? Any questions? Wouldn't what be what? This? So VAP. No, right. It's, I know it's the office, like the, because it's the other direction. But when you write it like that, wouldn't it just be the yeah. negative of the velocity of the uh, air relative to the plane? Like when you wrote in that equation again, when you wrote the negative in front of it, isn't that? So my goal was to get this equation, right? Right, yeah, I get and that. And do you agree that this is equivalent to this? Oh, yes. I thought you were trying to say that for, to find that thing, we need the opposite. I gotcha. Person. I get it. You just wrote it the other way. Whatever. Yes. You're good? Yes. Is everybody good? OK, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in vector notation each of these vectors. I don't like vectors. I'm sorry. It's, it's not going to go away. If you don't like vectors, you don't like physics, because like, legit, because they're not going to go away. All right? So let's do this. So um, let's write an expression for negative velocity of p relative to a. All right, well, um, that's going to be 500 kilometers at, instead of 20 degrees east of north, it's actually 20 degrees <laughs> west of south, right? I want to flip it around 180 degrees, right? Does that make sense? Yes. All right, so now what I'm going to do shh, is I'm going to write that out in unit vector notation. So negative VPA is, so 500 sine of 20. So you get 171. I and you get 469.8 J. Should either of those be negative? Both of them should be negative. How can I figure that out without even drawing the triangle? West and south, right? So that, what I just wrote here, is this thing, right? Good? Johnny, how are you doing back there? You all right? Yeah. Somebody remind me to mark Penny Apps and I forgot to do that. All right. Everybody good? All right. Now, I also need to know the velocity of p relative to g. Uh, oh, that's over here. How do I write that in ve unit vector notation? Just 400j, right? Cool? Now what do I do? Add them, right? Because we decided that the velocity of the air relative to the ground was negative VPA plus VPG. So add them up. So now the velocity of A relative to G is going to be negative 171i minus 69.8j 
And now you just put your vector back together. Okay. Yes, Peter. So, oh wait, actually never mind. I thought that because uh, when I did this problem, I was trying to make like the total um, like y axis vector quantity 400 because I thought that like with everything ended up together that it would be 400. There uh, is a way to solve it that way. Yeah, and like that's what I tried, but then it just like didn't work out, and now I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you, what I'm hearing you say, you tried to make everything add up to VPG, is that correct? Yeah. So, let's do that then. If we want everything to add up to VPG then, this should have been your expression. The velocity of the plane relative to the ground should be the velocity of the plane relative to the air plus the velocity of the air relative to the ground, right? Okay, so let's see. Which of those two things do we know? We know the velocity of the plane relative to the air. Oh, actually, this works. This is cool. So the velocity of the plane relative to the ground was 400j, right? Is that correct? Yep. Equals the velocity of the plane relative to the air. That's... Uh, this, but with my signs flip-flopped, right? So, it'll be so that's 171i plus 469j equal, uh, sorry, plus the velocity of the air relative to the ground, which is the thing we're looking for. So this is cool. Oh, yeah. So now what do you do? I just, I neglected to acknowledge the fact that it, that it would be a negative quantity, like that the AG would be a negative quantity, um, as far as like the J goes. Gotcha. The J component. So yeah, it would be negative 69, so right? I got 469, I got discouraged because I was like, how could it end up to 400 if I am already above 400? I gotcha. Good. Yeah. So yeah, this, this works. That's good. Yes, Carla. Did it using the displacement vectors? Yeah. You can do that. I think it's ugly, but it works. Yeah, and then like, how do I find an angle? That's what I, I got the right, um, like, velocity vector, but then I didn't. It should be the exact same thing, because your displacement vectors are always going to be proportional to your velocity vectors. Okay, so let me try again then. So it should be the exact same thing. You should get exactly twice, because the time was two hours, so all of your numbers should just be twice as big as mine. Yeah, I divided it by two hours for the velocity. So I got, I got the velocity, but then I just couldn't get the data. Okay. All right, are we good? Questions? All right. So this technique, you guys, this technique of writing out an expression like this, is colossal. Like you, you can't do these, if it's about a boat crossing a river, or a plane in wind, or a ladybug crawling across a conveyor belt, or anything like that, where you've got one thing moving this way and another thing moving that way, you got to do this. Follow? All right, and I think what I didn't do a good job of in the notes is showing you, once you do that, then how do you add the vectors, right? And that's you got to do the unit vector notation or components, right? Good? All right, so 8 is very similar to that, okay? All right, what else is on the list here? Uh, 3. Uh-oh, the dreaded number 3. I'll be honest, I haven't looked at 3 since. All right, what do we got? Number 3, a suspicious looking man. Justin. Why am I suspicious? I don't know. There's no reason. I just wanted to pick up somebody. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry you're feeling. I apologize. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, a suspicious looking man runs as fast as he can from one end of a moving sidewalk at the airport to the other in two and a half seconds. Then security agents appear and the man runs as fast as he can back along the sidewalk to his starting point taking 10 seconds. Why did it take him longer to go back? Because he's running against the thing, right? What is the ratio of the man's running speed to the sidewalk speed? All right, so here's the sidewalk. Would you like the sidewalk to be going up or down? Uh, left. 
not a choice. Here's the velocity of the sidewalk. All right? Now, the man is going to run with some velocity. The velocity of the man. Now, because he's on the sidewalk, when I, like, suppose the dude can run at 4 meters a second. 4 meters a second, 4 meters a second, 4 meters a second, right? Then he gets onto the moving sidewalk. He's still running at 4 meters a second, but that's 4 meters a second relative to the sidewalk. Follow? Yes. So, so this velocity of the sidewalk is relative to the ground, right? Cool? So, um, so chunk A, when he's going with the sidewalk, all right, so we need to, I feel like we should uh, come up with an expression for the distance, right? So let's just call that displacement, right? So our displacement that the guy is going to run is the constant, right? Because regardless of which way he's going to run, the sidewalk is still the same length, right? So we're talking about the displacement of the man relative to the ground, right? If the, if the sidewalk stretches for 10 meters, that's 10 meters relative to the ground. Good? So let's see if we can write an expression. So this is equal to the velocity of the man relative to the ground times the time, which was 2.5, right? Yes. OK? So that's when he's going with the sidewalk. So let's see if we can write up an expression for this. So the velocity of the man relative to the ground. So the sidewalk is going this way, and the man relative to the sidewalk is going this way. So this is the combined velocity of the man relative to the ground, right? So this is the velocity of the man relative to the sidewalk plus the velocity of the sidewalk relative to the ground times 2.5. That's the displacement of the man relative to the ground. <coughs> Everybody good there? Yeah. Does anybody have any questions? Is anybody lying about their level of questioning or things? Those are horrible signs. All right. Now let's do chunk B against the sidewalk. Popular Bob Seeger song. God, I hate him. <laughs> All right. So now the displacement of the man relative to the ground, it's still equal to the velocity of the man relative to the ground, but now it's times <coughs> 10 seconds, right? Follow? All right. So now the velocity of the man relative to the ground is what? Velocity of the man minus the Yeah, so this is the velocity of the man relative to the sidewalk minus the velocity of the sidewalk relative to the ground, right? times 10. Now let me pause for a minute. I know that it's got to be this way, that it's got to be man minus sidewalk, just by doing a little bit of, of logic. Why? What do you got? He would never get there if it was overpowering his speed. Good. He's got to be going faster than the sidewalk or he'd never get there, right? Yeah. So the velocity of the man relative to the sidewalk has got to be bigger than the velocity of the sidewalk relative to the ground. Follow? Yes. Mathematically, this is just, well, yeah. OK, so good? All right. Now, this is all equal to the displacement of the man relative to the ground. All right. So I haven't solved this problem since last year. So I, I kind of just followed my nose here. I just kind of said, all right, well, I know regardless of which direction he's running, the displacement has to be the same. So what I did was I wrote an expression for the man's displacement in terms of the two things that I wanted the ratio between. And then I did the same thing for the other part. Follow? Carla, I'm not done, but are you good up to there? What do you got? Yeah, should the... You guys Patrick computers. Hi, um, should the negative VSG 
I don't know why, but I'm, I have it as negative PGS. Um, all right, so let's see if we can logic our way through this. Um, can you go back up to the top of the all the B? Here? I, I don't think, I think this is everything I've done for this problem. Oh. Um, so I think what's confusing about this is that technically this VMS represents his speed. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And so I sort of had to inject this negative sign to indicate now he's going the other way. Oh, okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Follow? Yeah. So a lot of this was just kind of some logic, I guess. Everybody good? All right. So now let's solve this mess. So I've got VMS plus VSG times 2.5 equals VM, oops, VMS minus VSG times 10. <coughs> what am I looking for? What does the question want to know? The ratio of the man's running speed to the sidewalk. The man's running speed to the sidewalk's moving speed. That's what I'm looking for, right? So how should I solve this thing? Anybody have any ideas? Yeah, I mean basically we want to get all the VMS on one side and all the VSG on the other side, right? Yep. So you can distribute, which totally works. It's not how I would do it. Because isn't 10 a multiple of 2.5? Yes. So let's divide both sides by 2.5. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. I mean, yes, I wanted to divide. I didn't want to extend my page. Um, so if I divide both sides by 2.5, you get VMS plus VSG equals VMS minus VSG times 4. Now we can distribute. Does that make sense? Yeah. So now I've got VMS plus VSG equals 4 VMS minus 4 VSG. Now what? Let's add VSG and subtract VMS. So you get 5 VSG equals 3 VMS. Follow? So let's see, I want to divide by VSG and divide by 3. So you get VMS over VSG equals 5 over 3. Peter. So the way that I did it was I just like assigned um, arbitrary numbers to like his speed with, like when he's going with the sidewalk and his speed when he's going against it. First velocity when he's going against it. And Wait, rewind and say that one more time. I just like assign two numbers to his two like. What uh, two numbers did you use? Four and one. Okay. Then tell me what the four and the one represent. Four is like four meters per second is his velocity with the, when he's going with the sidewalk, and um, one meter per second is his velocity when he's going against the sidewalk. Okay, you can't. You can't do that. I got the right answer. Though. Wait, you you can because like because you know that like the the, the in the middle of the like. In the middle of those two numbers is the velocity of the sidewalk, like because, um, and then the difference is the velocity of the man. So the difference between the average of those two numbers and the two uh, numbers is the velocity of the man. And then you can I see what you're saying. saying. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess that works. Yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. So that's what we were talking about. I don't know, like, gotcha. Yeah, that is, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, questions on what we did here? All right, so that was the dreaded number three. Oh, duck. Uh, 11 and 14. Which one do I want to do next? All right, 11. I'm going to do 14 first. Oh, shoot. Oh, this is the one where you got to find the direction the wind is blowing in. Ew. 
Okay. Is there a way that's yeah, right. so it's similar to seven? Seven. Seven. seven? It is similar to seven. I think it's harder if I remember it's right. It's because you don't know. Oh, no, they don't give you anything. One of the two angles. You don't know any angles, and the other one gave you one of the two. Which is why I was not surprised. The keyword is a lot of all right. Um, do you know what? Let me. I think that of the two, it probably makes more sense to do 11 because I think 14 is conceptually very similar to what we did when we did number seven, maybe a step up difficulty wise. And to be honest, anything that's relative motion on, on the AP test is going to be a multiple choice question, so it's not going to be anything quite as long as 14. So let me do 11, and then if there's time, I'll come back and get 14, okay? I like 11 because it's another one of these graph problems. So do you guys remember the problem, the, the last graph problem we did? Uh, where you had to find A and B, like you were given expressions for X and Y, and you had to find A and B. And I talked about strategically picking points on the graph. All right? Number 11 is kind of the same deal. Okay, so let's, let's talk about number 11 and then I'll go back and get 14. I think we'll have time to do both. Okay, so here we go. Number 11. It says, in figure A, a sled moves in a negative x direction at a constant speed of vx. So you've got this little sled or cart or whatever, and it's moving this way at a speed of vs, as in velocity of the sled. I guess technically that's going to be relative to the ground, right? Okay. Now, we're going to launch a ball out of it uh, with a velocity of Vox and Voy relative to the sled. And it doesn't tell you what direction it's fired, whether it's being fired forward or backward. Okay. It turns out it's got to be being fired backwards, and I'll explain how we know that in a minute. Okay. I did not know this when I first read the problem. I had to analyze the graph to figure out why. Okay, So I'm going to draw it that way, and I'll explain how I knew it had to be drawn that way in a minute. Okay, So here is the velocity of the ball of ice. What do they call it? They just call it B, right? So here's the velocity of the ball of ice relative to the sled initially. Okay, And then the two components of that, the problem is called vox and voy. So both of these components are relative to the sled. Okay, And if you read the problem, it says that pretty explicitly. Good? All right. So the graph, has a, the graph compares the velocity of the sled to the displacement of the ball relative to the ground, right? So the, horizontal, or the vertical axis of my graph is the displacement of the ball relative to the ground, and the horizontal axis is the velocity of the sled. And then the graph looks something like this, right? Follow? OK. So it seems to me like the, well, so what are the two obvious points to pick? I shouldn't say obvious. That's Intercept and zero. But yeah, look at your intercepts, right? Okay. So what this point is telling me, what the blue point is telling me is this. If the velocity of the sled is zero, then the displacement of the ball relative to the ground is 40 meters. And I got the 40 meters by reading the graph. Cool. So the 40 meters is, I mean, it's this number right here, 40. Follow? All right. So that still doesn't really help me, right? Because I don't know, I mean, I, what it's telling me is that if the sled isn't moving and I launch the ball with this velocity, it's going to go 40 meters. But I don't know anything about these two components. So that doesn't really help me too much yet. So does everybody understand what that tells us and why it sort of doesn't help me too much yet? Yeah. All right. Now, let's take a look at this point. What this point tells me is this. That point is telling me that if the velocity of the sled is 10 meters a second, negative, I guess, right, because it's going to the left, 
then the displacement of the ball relative to the ground is zero. So what that's saying is, relative to the ground, the ball went straight up and straight down. That is huge. That piece of information is colossal. Automatically, I know one of the three sides of my triangle based on that. So think about it. The sled is moving this way, right? The sled's moving this way. If the projectile gets fired straight up in the air, then the, sled, the projectile is going to have the same horizontal displacement as the sled, right? Mm -hmm. So if the sled is moving this way, and I want it to not go this way, I have to fire it backwards. Yeah. With what horizontal velocity? Equal but opposite to the sled's velocity, right? Yeah. Oh. So if the sled is going that way at 10 meters a second, but it doesn't move, that means this must be positive 10 meters a second. Does that make sense, you guys? Yes. Um, I re I'm trying really hard to write my tests so they're a comparable difficulty level with what you'd see on the AP test. A lot of this stuff is, is stuff that I think will help you get better at physics, but it wouldn't necessarily be on the test. So know what I mean? So, yeah, this is totally tricky. <laughs> yes? So, when I was reading this question, I thought that, like, this was, like, a one continuous thing. Like, you were shooting a ball, and, like, the grass was charting it, like, over a period of time. I didn't think that it was, like, different trials. Right. Like, almost. And so I got like completely tripped up on that. So like So your your latter explanation is correct. It's sort of different trials. Your your first explanation kind of doesn't make sense. Right. Because once the projectile gets launched, changing the velocity of the sled doesn't matter. Right? Because the projectile's already up in the air. Yeah, I guess it is really good on the same spectrum. Okay. Um so but does this process make sense? All right, great. So, oh, cool. So I just used this green point and found out a whole bunch of valuable information. Now let's use the blue point. So what the blue point is telling me is if the sled is not moving and I launch the projectile, it'll go 40 meters while it's in the air. So how fast is the ball moving that way horizontally if the sled's not moving? 10 meters a second. How long is it going to take to go 40 meters? Four seconds. Four seconds. Ah, does that depend on how fast the sled is moving? No, because my vertical velocity is what determines the time in the air. Right? So no matter how fast the sled is moving, it's going to be in the air. The ball is going to be in the air for four seconds. Follow? Uh, Evan? Yep. So if I can... Suppose I can consistently throw this pen up in the air at exactly that same velocity and actually catch it like a real human being. Okay? Okay? So, one, two. God bless it. Let me use a pair. Less, less pointy. All right. One, two. Right? One, two. Even if I'm walking sideways, one, two. Right? So the horizontal motion of the sled does nothing to affect how long the ball is in the air for. Good. But how can you find the number? Sorry? How can you find the four seconds number? Well, because what I know is it's moving horizontally at 10 meters a second. And if the sled isn't moving, then it's going to go 40 meters. Yeah. <coughs> so how long would it take at 10 meters a second to go 40 meters? Four seconds, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes, that's it's not obvious. This is complicated. But does that make sense, you guys? Mm -hmm. All right, so now what I know is this. I know my projectile is going to go and it's going to land after four seconds, which means it hits the top after two seconds. What's the vertical velocity here? Zero. Zero. So two seconds before that, the vertical velocity must be 2 times 9.8, which is 19.6. So wild. Hang on, hang on. Give me like 10 seconds. Right? So look, I know the ball's got to be in the air for four seconds. Is everybody okay with how I got there? 
All right. So now the question is, what does the vertical velocity need to be to make it be in the air for four seconds? Well, I know the velocity decreases at a rate of 9.8. Right? So in the course of the time it's in the air, the velocity has got to decrease by, what, 39.2, right? 9.8 times 4, right? Half of that's on the way up, half of it's on the way down. Matt, here, do you, want, do you want me to do the equation? Here's the equation. It's this. Oops. So if my time is 2 seconds, I don't know what VOI is. I know my acceleration is negative 9.8 meters a second squared. What's my VFY, you guys? At the end of two seconds? Zero. You're right, after four seconds. That would good too. Cool? So now you just use, oops. Uh, so now you just use A equals VF minus VI over T and solve for VI. Follow? Uh, All right, so the, this trick, you guys, is a thing that you absolutely have to know for projectiles. If you know how long a projectile is in the air, you automatically, well, assuming it starts and ends at the same height, you automatically know your VIY. Projectiles are easy. This is hard. Okay, yeah, this is tricky. It's tricky for sure. Yes, 4.3 is easier. Yeah, so I think the other thing I'm going to do next year is I'm going to, yeah, well, so. anyway, okay, are we good? Yeah. All right, so last one is 14. Do we have time to do 14? Yes. Yes, minutes. Or do you want to do the trick next Oh, so I, so, all right, so hold on, so real quick. So that's a, uh, oh. Are, are you guys good with B and C? <laughs> For 11 B and C? Let's do 11 B and C real fast. And they are fast. So 11 B says the ball's displacement can also be measured. Assume the sled's velocity is not changed when the ball is shot. What is the displacement of the ball? Oh, relative to the sled. <laughs> Uh, when Vs is 5 meters a second. Oh! Uh, so, yeah, oh, right, here's why I put a smiley face on it. Uh, why am I dumb? My brain just stopped here. Uh, yes. No, that's speech. Graph is Right. All right. So to do 11B, here's what I know. Based on the graph, I know that if Vs is 5, then the displacement of the ball relative to the ground is 20. Right? Yeah. Okay. So. How do I find the displacement of the ball relative to the sled? Well, uh, displacement of the ball relative to the sled is the same as the displacement of the ball relative to the ground plus the displacement of the ground relative to the sled, right? Oops. I'm making this more complicated than I need to because I haven't had enough coffee today. Um, so this is the displacement of the ball relative to the ground minus the displacement of the sled relative to the ground. So displacement of the ball relative to the ground is 20 meters, right? Yep. Minus how far will... the sled go in that time? That was weird. How long will the sled go? How far will the sled go is what I'm doing a rotten job of asking. How long is the ball in the air for? Four seconds. Four seconds. And if the velocity of the sled is five, it's going to go 20 meters. 
What's 20 minus 20? Zero. Zero. So that means the ball is going to land right back on the sled. Yeah. Uh, it was given to you in the problem. Cool? Yes. What's wrong, Maggie? How did I get the 20? This one? Because uh, I know the ball's in the air for four seconds. And the problem tells you the sled's moving at five meters a second. Sorry? I, like, I'm confused as to how you got that the ball would move 20 meters in four seconds. Is that, is that, like, is the horizontal velocity of the ball equal to five meters per second as well? Wait a minute. There's, I, there's something wrong here. I'm missing a negative sign somewhere. It can't be zero. The only way it would be zero is if the sled was shot, or if the ball was shot straight up in the air. What am I missing? The sled's moving that way. <laughs> what did I miss here? Uh, uh, the the yes, minus negative. Thank you. That's what I'm missing. So that gives you 40 meters. There we go. Sorry about that. That makes that makes way more sense. So C. So part C, you guys are going to do the same way, except here we did five times four. In part C, you're going to do 15 times four. Good? All right, sorry about that. I knew something was wrong there. All right, um, so that is that. Uh, we didn't get to 14. I, I really think 14 is not that big of an issue. Um, so use the time over the weekend to work on projectiles. What did we say? We've got 4-3-A is due on Monday. Tuesday we'll do circular motion notes, and then you've got a worksheet due both Thursday and Friday. All right, so are we feeling better about this, you guys? Yes. No, somewhat. Yes, I see some nods. If you're in the no camp, if you're in the.